navigating the maze of English homophones and homonyms, recognizing common collocations. Hello, language learners. In today's video, we will explore an intriguing part of the English language, homophones and homonyms, more specifically focusing on strategies to avoid confusion. Among these strategies, we'll concentrate on one of the most efficient tools, which is understanding the context. Our subtopic for today is recognizing common collocations. As we delve into this topic, we will learn how to utilize context and common collocations to distinguish homophones and homonyms. Let's dive in. First and foremost, it's important to remember what we mean by homophones, homonyms, and collocations. Homophones are words that sound alike but have different meanings. Examples include there, there, and there. Homonyms, on the other hand, are words that sound alike and are spelled alike but have different meanings, like bear, an animal, and bear, to endure or withstand. Now, what are collocations? They are words that frequently go together, and using them correctly can help make your English sound more fluent and natural. For example, make a decision is a common collocation. We don't usually say, do a decision. Understanding these three concepts is the key to mastering English pronunciation and avoiding common confusions. Now, you might be wondering, why are collocations important in the context of homophones and homonyms? The answer lies in the fact that collocations help us to predict what words go together, which can be instrumental in determining the meaning of a sentence, especially when homophones or homonyms are involved. By understanding and recognizing collocations, you'll be better equipped to decipher the correct meaning based on the context. Recognizing common collocations is a matter of practice and familiarity. Let's go through a few examples to illustrate this. Take the words peace and peace, which are homophones. If we hear the phrase peace of mind, it could be confusing. However, if we are familiar with the collocation peace of mind, we can quickly realize that the correct phrase is indeed peace of mind. Another example is flour and flour. If we hear bake a flour cake, it sounds odd. That's because the common collocation is bake a flour cake. In this way, recognizing collocations can help you avoid confusion. To get better at recognizing collocations, practice is key. One way to practice is by reading a lot. The more you read, the more you will be exposed to common collocations, helping you recognize them when you encounter homophones and homonyms. Another method is to use exercises and quizzes specifically designed to test your knowledge of collocations. You can easily find these in English learning books or online resources. Recognizing common collocations is an effective strategy to avoid confusion when dealing with homophones and homonyms in English. With practice and exposure to a wide range of texts, you will become more and more familiar with these common word combinations. Remember, learning a language is a journey. It's not about perfection, but improvement. Keep practicing, stay curious, and always strive to learn more. I hope this video has shed light on the importance of recognizing common collocations when dealing with homophones and homonyms. Thank you for watching, and happy language learning!